This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 6, this is Section 1. Purpose is what we are going for. David, purpose is what we are going for. Forgiveness is the purpose. You could also call it salvation or atonement. You can call it by many different names. There is a different purpose for this world which is very obscure and buried. When the mind falls asleep, it thinks of purpose in terms of specifics. What is the purpose of a house? What is the purpose of a pencil? What is the purpose of shoes? Everything seems to have a purpose. When you really start to look at it, the purpose almost always comes back to how it relates to the body in some way. Everything comes back to the body. You could say that cities grew up near waterways and interstates and they seem to have an economic function. That purpose is based on economics. The economic system is based on supporting human life, which is directly linked to identification with the body. The purpose we are trying to come to is not natural to the deceived mind. Just as forgiveness is not natural to it, When the mind fell asleep, it learnt of a false world. You have to carefully unlearn the world. You have to learn a new purpose. In the kingdom of heaven, there is no purpose. There is just being. Purpose is like a goal and in the kingdom of heaven, there are no goals. friend. So the purpose of forgiveness can only come into play with the seeming separation. In truth, there is no forgiveness. In truth, there is no purpose. David, right. There is no need for atonement and correction in heaven. If we are talking about a single purpose, We are talking about the realm of heaven. I am using the term heaven as natural. Heaven is natural. When the mind fell asleep, that was very unnatural. And now it has to learn this very unnatural correction. It is like the needle in the haystack. The mind fell asleep and found itself in the haystack. And now it has to find the needle. To do that, it has to question every piece of straw in the haystack. It requires a very thorough going through. You cannot by chance just stick your hand in there and hope to pull the needle out. That is why it is so important that we keep coming together to look at all the obstacles and blocks to our awareness of that purpose. It has to be very carefully learned. The new interpretation section in chapter 30 talks about purpose. It says that only a constant purpose can endow events with stable meaning. Once the mind falls asleep, it perceives all these images. Everything is distorted. Instead of having a single unified purpose, there are seeming millions of purposes. 
everything perceived seems to have a different purpose. This book seems to have a different purpose than the microphone. These shoes seem to have a different purpose than this couch. The table seems to have a different purpose than the chair. Everything seems to have meaning in and of itself. Jesus addresses this in the workbook. At the most superficial levels, you do recognize purpose. Yet purpose cannot be understood at these levels. For example, you do not understand that a telephone is for the purpose of talking to someone who is not physically in your immediate vicinity. What you do not understand is what you want to reach him for. And it is this that makes your contact with him meaningful or not. Workbook Lesson 25 It is one thing to call somebody on the phone, but what is my purpose for reaching him? What is this for? When you answer that question, you are getting down to the mind level. That is a decision of mind. What is my purpose in reaching my brother, as opposed to the superficial purpose? Teach only love, for that is what you are. Text, chapter 6, section 1. Again, whether it is making a phone call, going to visit someone, or doing anything, tune into the Holy Spirit and ask, Holy Spirit, what would you have me say? What would you have me do? It may take the form of a phone call, but really it is about intention. That is another word for purpose. What is my intention? Am I trying to pull out the hooks to make somebody guilty? Am I calling to manipulate somebody to get them to do something that I want them to do? Friend, you mean like if I try to reach my children because I'm worried and I want to know what and how they're doing? That is one thing. But if I want to call somebody just to gossip about somebody, then that is my purpose? David, you need to look at the idea of concern as well. If the Holy Spirit has a purpose, and if I line up with it and feel peace then I want to learn what that purpose is. Because it does not feel good to feel scared or concerned. It is uncomfortable. Friend, when they are not answering the phone, I could think, oh, they are probably out at the lake. They are fine. They are having fun. But then my next thought might be an effort to reassure myself that nothing happened, hoping that everything is okay. I get scared because I think maybe they have lost the phone number and are trying to call me and cannot reach me. Then I try to reassure myself again that they are fine. David Lesson 37 says, my holiness blesses the world. And lesson 38 deals very practically with concern for how people are doing. The lesson is, there is nothing my holiness cannot do. The first paragraph says, Your holiness reverses all the laws of the world. It is beyond every restriction of time, space, distance, and limits of any kind. Your holiness is totally unlimited in its power because it establishes you as a son of God at one with the mind of his creator. 
Workbook Lesson 38 And the specific applications in italics are the ones that are really useful. The way it reads is in the situation involving blank in which I see myself there is nothing that my holiness cannot do. Put your own name in the blank as you think of yourself calling home and feeling fearful about not getting an answer.